Now that we've installed our hard drive and power supply, you'll want to grab your CPU, your RAM. Windows can wait for now, so we'll put that away for later. You also want to grab your motherboard. Your video card can also wait if you've purchased one of them. So basically, all you want to grab is your CPU, your motherboard, and your RAM. This is a close-up of the Intel Pentium G3240. The two sticks of Kingston Value Series DDR3. These are four gigs apiece. And the ASRock H81M HDS. So now that we've got these three components, we want to set the CPU and the RAM aside for the moment and focus merely on the motherboard. So we want to open this up, and if you've seen my unboxing and overview of this board, you'll see that I've already opened this, so we've got two SATA cables, we'll use these after, or one of these after, so just set them aside for now. They look kind of like this. You might, If you know anything about computers at all, you would have known, you would know what these are. You've got your I.O. shield, so that goes in the back of your case, and it covers all your ports and stuff. And I got this, I screwed this up in the um, unboxing and overview, which may not be out yet, but this is your manual, not your motherboard, it's your manual, with your driver CD and warranty card. We're going to set all of them aside for now. There's also this piece of packaging we're also going to set aside. And finally, your motherboard. So we're going to place that down. And we're going to close up the box here. And this makes a great workbench for your motherboard, CPU, and memory. Now, the motherboard is in an anti-static bag. This bag basically protects it from being shocked by any electricity whilst it's being transported to you. Once you take it out of the bag, it's not giving you any of that protection anymore. But this doesn't make it bad. This doesn't make it bad to sit on the bag. So basically, when you stick your hand in the bag, if it doesn't have this foam that you might be able to see, it's this pink stuff here, you want to be very careful where you touch the board. So you want to either grab it by the edges, or there's a bracket right underneath the CPU socket. It's a big metal bracket, you can't damage anything by touching that. But you want to handle it by the plastic parts, release it from its bag. Now it's okay to set it on the bag, even with or without the foam, it's fine. It's okay to set it on the bag. Some people tell you that it's not, it's completely fine. Yeah. We're not going to set it on the bag just because we're just avoiding arguments. We're also going to... See, I'm holding it by that bracket there and by the cover on the CPU socket. We're just going to place it on the box and this foam can go, go away. This is how your motherboard is most likely going to sit in your case. So you've got your CPU socket here. Get that centered. Your memory socket's here. And your video card socket here. You've also got your SATA ports over here your USB 3.0 port here, USB 2's down at the bottom, and it took me a while to find these two ports, but your HD audio is over here, and your front panel connectors are over here. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's install the CPU. So we're going to set the motherboard away for the moment. Now we're going to look at the CPU. This is the Intel Pentium G3240. And you can actually see the processor is sitting right there. Now, there's two sides that you can cut to this box. There's this side with all some specs on here, and this side with your warranty label. Don't cut this label. If you cut this label, you won't be able to get any warranty specifications. There's just a little tiny piece of tape on this side. So you just want to grab your knife and cut that piece of tape. Very simple. The specifications on this says it's a dual core with two threads with Intel HD graphics. 
Intel HD graphics you don't need if you've got a video card, but most CPUs, most Intel CPUs have HD graphics. Now that we've cut that, you can open it up and see, lift these two tabs. Now you see this little cutout here? That is where the opening of the box is. If you open it like that, everything's going to fall out. So you want to open it this way, pull it out, and you'll see straight away there's your heatsink fan with thermal goop applied. So what you want to do is just set that down for the moment. Intel now owns McAfee, so you've got a free license to McAfee. I don't know for how long. I'm guessing it's like 30 days or something like that, but you've got a free license for that, so we'll put that in the box afterwards for the customer. And you've got this CPU manual, which I just dropped, with your Intel, I just dropped it again, Intel Go Faster sticker thing. I actually opened up one of these manuals the other day to see what's in it. It's like 20 pages of multilingual manual, it's just pictures. And the rest is like warranty stuff. This is ridiculously thick for warranty stuff. And you'll see the rest of this box is empty. So we're going to put that over there. Now, this is your... This heatsink fan is covered by plastic. Now, if you follow in along, you'll be able to see this plastic here as well. Um, basically, don't remove the plastic until you're ready to install the fan. So what you want to do is flip it with your hand underneath. So you see I put my hand like that, hand like that, flip it, and just lift the box. You might have to shake it a little bit. And you'll see the fan comes out in still in the plastic. Just set the fan aside with the plastic still on it. Now your CPU is still in the cardboard here. You can either slide it out from the top and there's this little cutout here. Or, I find it easier if you just see these corners that are in here. You just find one of them you can lift. Lift it out. And your CPU falls right out. This is a very expensive part. This is the most expensive part per square centimetre. And you'll see it's probably two and a half centimeters by two and a half centimeters. In Imperial, it's probably just over an inch by an inch. Very expensive. You, I don't know if you'll be able to see. It says here, Intel Pentium G3240 has the SKU number. It says it's 3.1 gigahertz, and it says it's made in Costa Rica. This box is now empty, so we can just close that back up and sit it over there. So here's the CPU, here's the heatsink fan. Move the heatsink fan away, bring the motherboard back. You'll see the motherboard has a cover over the socket. And on that socket cover, there's a little triangle in this corner here. Look for where the triangle is because it may be different on your board. The Intel processor also has a little triangle in this corner here. Now that's one way to know which way the processor goes. There is also a notch on the top here and the top here. Now, if the, so if the CPU is going in this way into the board, see if we can move that board so you can see it a little easier. The CPU is going this way into the board, there will also be a notch on this side and on this side in the same spots. That's how your CPU goes in. So. To open this CPU, there's a little cutaway on one of the corners. Let's see if I can find it here. There it is. And it's basically clamshell packaging. It just opens like that. Now, when you, you don't want to touch the top of this CPU, and you most definitely don't want to touch the bottom of it. Same with the socket. You don't want to touch that either. You just want to stick your thumb in, open up the packaging, and grip it by the sides. I'll show you how to do that in a second. We're just going to close that back up here because I'm going to show you how to open the socket. You'll see there's this little tension retention lever thing here. You basically want to push that down and move it away. 
and you'll see it comes up. Now th this is won't let me push it down real easily. I can still push it down, but there's a lot of force. You basically just want to move that all the way back and you'll see the socket cover comes up. You'll want to leave this closed until you're ready to install your CPU. But there are 1150 tiny little pins in there and we don't want to break them, so we're going to set that back down for now. There are also 1150 little gold landings, as you can see there. I don't know if you want to count them. There is 1150. That's why it's socket LGA 1150. But you want to open up your CPU, find which way it's going to orient, grip it. There's two little cutouts in the plastic here and here. You want to grip the CPU that way, but we're going to open the socket first. You want to grip the CPU that way, orient it in the right direction. So there's the notch here and here, here and here. And you just, I like putting one side in, then the other, and it just drops into place. This is inserted now. You can give it a little wiggle on the sides to make sure it's inserted. Do not push any, do not put any pressure on this. This is a zero insertion force socket or a zip socket. So you just want to close that back down. And now this lever has a lot of tension on it. So you're going to have to push really hard. And you'll hear a lot of clicks and it's very hard to push down. But that came down and this plastic bit came back up or came off. That CPU is fully installed now. So keep this plastic bit that I just dropped. Keep this plastic bit because if you ever need to send this motherboard back for warranty or RMA purposes, they won't honor your warranty if you don't ship it with this cover or the CPU in. You don't want to ship it with the CPU in though because you may not get your CPU back. You always want to have this cover on you, so we're going to set that where we remember it. Now for the heatsink fan. You'll see there's thermal paste right there. There's those three lines. They're thermal paste. If yours doesn't have thermal paste, you'll need to buy some aftermarket thermal paste and install it yourself. Basically, this fan, if we lift it out, actually before we do that, there's a hole in each corner of the CPU socket. So there's one here, 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 and here. I'm not touching the board, by the way. These pegs, as you can probably see, in each corner of the heatsink fan, so here, 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 and here, have to go in those holes. So yeah, there's little pegs that go in. So basically, this CPU fan can go any way you want. It can go this way, this way, any way you want. What we're concerned with is not exactly looks. If you're a real OCD person, you might want the Intel logo the right way. Um, it's up to you. I don't really care about the Intel logo being the right way. What I do care about is this fan wire. So you see the fan wire comes out here. And the fan CPU fan header is over here. So if I have to plug this fan in, you see, let's get that out of the way, it has to go reach over the fan. So what we're going to do is move it so the cooler is this way, and now the plug is right there. So what we're going to do is make sure it's lined up correctly so that all of the little plastic pegs are in the holes, and then we're going to see these little plastic bits, they kind of wiggle a bit, you want to push them in until they click. And you want to do opposite corners, you don't want to put any pressure, any unnecessary pressure on your CPU. So one, two, three, four. And you just want to kind of double check them there. Another way to check is to pick it up by the heat sink and see these little white bits. If they're white with a little black bit in the middle, it's came through correctly. You want to check all four of them. By the way, it's alright to hold it by the heatsink. Uh, it's completely fine. There's no uh, damage you can do by holding that unless you've got a really big board. Now we want to take this fan cable and 
I don't have any zip ties on me at the moment, but what you would do is you would roll this up in your fingers like that and zip tie it. Actually, I'm going to go see if I have some zip ties. I'll be right back. What do you know? I do have some zip ties. So what you want to do is grab your cable, wrap it around your fingers like so, so you've got a little bit of cable left over at each end, and then you see this loop? You just want to pinch it together, grab a zip tie, and this can be a little bit difficult, but you basically just want to zip tie it together. like so. Now you might need to use two zip ties here, which I am going to use. So once you've got the first one on, it's a little easier to put the second one on. So you just kind of loop it, put it on, and tighten it down once you're happy. So it's the same rule again, snug but not too tight, and you just want to cut the tails off. So one, two. So now we've cut those zip tie cables or tails off. You just want to bend this fan head off. You see there's a little, um, little dents in the fan header. They match up with dents the fan connectors on the board. You just want to plug that in. So you see now that fan's out of the way. It's never, hopefully, going to fall into the fan. There's no real chance it will. And yeah, that's the CPU installed. Next, we want to take our RAM and basically unbox it. Always cut away from yourself. And we'll see if we can open this RAM here. Now this is half height RAM. Your RAM might be a little larger. Well, most likely it'll be a little larger. So you just want to open the clamshell Sometimes the most difficult part of building a computer is getting the parts out of the box. So we've got our two sticks of half-height RAM here. And these are our RAM sockets here. Now you might be able to see on your board, I can just see it under the heatsink here. It's etched right on the board, DDR3A1, DDR3B1. Now. That basically means that this is the first RAM socket and this is the second RAM socket. So what we're going to do is grab our stick of RAM. Your RAM might have heat sinks on it, this stuff doesn't, but you'll see there's a little notch, if I can grip this properly, in the middle, well just off set from the middle here, it matches the little notch in the socket. You want to put this in to the socket. Now you see, if I put it in the furthest one from me first, it's going to be a bit of a squeeze to get that between the CPU heatsink and the other stick of RAM. So I'm going to stick it in the one closest to me first. And you just want to grab your thumbs and push until it clicks. Make sure both sides click like that, and you'll see the retention clips lock up. And then we want to take this sticker RAM, orient it in the right direction, make sure the tabs are open, That's hope that's obvious. If they're not open, you just pull them out, like so. Slot your RAM in again, and this is 8 gigs now installed.
And that's the, all the prep we need to do for the motherboard. There's no wires for the RAM, so yeah.